Last week, I preached a message called Intentional Prayers. Anybody been intentional this week with your prayers, praying? Come on. And there's three things that I pointed out to you. Number one was make the exchange. Remember, if we're going to pray to God, we're going to release things to God, then we have to actually give it to God, right? We give God our heaviness. He gives God, he gives us what is light, right? The second thing I told you is that you need to agree with heaven, right? You get to bind and loose things. Whatever you bind in heaven will be bound on the earth. Whatever you loose in heaven or forbid in heaven will be forbidden in the earth. Y'all here? Uh, All right. And then number three, I told you you need to anticipate God. Remember, Peter was in prison, but the church was praying while he was in prison. Come on, have anybody been praying this week? They were praying. He's in prison. They were praying. He's knocked on the door. They're so amazed that their prayers were answered that they didn't even believe the miracle had showed up that fast. Can I prophesy right here and tell some of you that the prayers you've been praying are going to come to your door faster then you can say amen at the end of your prayers. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not telling you something to move your and flip your wig. I'm telling you something that is a kingdom key, okay? All right, y'all here? So today I wanna teach on tongues. Get your Bible apps, get your notepads out, lean in. And then for those in the room who maybe want this gift um, to be activated, I'm going to pray for you today to activate that gift, okay? Um, If you're in the room and you're like, this is very, very awkward, let me just tell you, um, because I get it. The moment I said, we're going to talk about praying in tongues, some of y'all looked at your friends and you were like, why are you bringing me to this weird church? But let me tell you, if you're open, you'll look at me by the end of this gathering and say, thank you for, for, for allowing me to come to this church, I promise you. Okay, because what I'm going to teach you is something that I believe is for everybody. It is for everybody. And I'm going to tell you the differences of what those tongues are and what's maybe for some people, but what I believe is for all people. Okay, Um, write this down. Tongues is simply languages. It just simply means languages. What does tongues mean? So the biblical definition for tongues means what? Languages, okay? It don't mean gibberish. It don't mean blah, 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 right? It just means languages that come specifically from the Spirit of God, okay? All right. I want us to go to, uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 really quick. Uh, Because before I teach this, I want to specifically teach you the benefits of speaking and praying in tongues. There's a difference between speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. We can go home now. <laughs> okay, because some of you have been hung up on the speaking that you have neglected the praying. First Corinthians 12, 6 through 10, it says this. This is the gifts. Okay, these are all the gifts that the Holy Spirit has made available to you and I. There are different kinds of working. But in all of them and in every one is the same God at work. Tell somebody, say, it's the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The common good means it is used for the body of Christ. It is meant to serve one another and draw the loss to God. Okay? That's what that, that word common good means. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge. By means of the same spirit to another faith, by the same spirit to another gifts of healing, and by that one spirit to another miraculous mirror, miraculous power. Somebody say power. power. To another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits. That means discerning spirits. That means something is off and I feel it in the atmosphere. Or something's not right. You're saying something, but the truth ain't coming out of what you're saying. Right? Some of y'all got that. Most, most women have the gift of discernment. That's why you can't lie to husbands. Because she know. She does. I'm just saying. The Lord fixed it. The, the Lord said, never again will the woman ever deceive the man. So he places in most women the gift of discernment. And to another, another distinguishing spirits and to another speaking in different kinds of tongues. Different kinds of what? What did that word tongue mean? Languages. And to still another, the interpretation of 
tongues. So all these gifts come from who? All these gifts come from who? So let's put some respect on that reality. If these gifts come from God, you don't get to call any of these gifts weird. Put some respect, not to respect, on these gifts that come from the Holy Spirit. If they come from God, then you and I don't get to look at any of them and say, mm, not that one. Huh? That's like a person looking at a dollar bill and saying, I don't want the dollar bill, but I'll take the Benjamin. But a hundred ones is the same thing. Because it's all from the same source to serve the body of Christ, right? Now, before I move into this, I want us to put some respect on that because when you understand that these gifts are from God, you'll actually start acknowledging and accepting and respecting the people who have the gifts. They're not weird. It's just their measure. It's just their portion. Every person in this room has a gift from the Holy Spirit. Tell somebody, say, I have a gift or gifts from the Holy Spirit. Okay, before I move into this, I want us to build a solid foundation, okay? I want us to deal with the number one misunderstood and misinterpreted scripture. Go to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. I don't have it on the screens, guys. I'm sorry. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. That's why you got to bring your Bibles. <laughs> or just look on with somebody to your left. If you got it, say got it. If not, say wait on me. Got you. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. It says, and they all were filled with the Holy Spirit. They all, who? Some? All. 120 people were in the upper room and the Bible says, and they all were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. As the Spirit did what? Enabled. As the Spirit enabled them. That word enable means utter. Right? So the word tongue speaks about the ability, this specific tongue, hear me, this specific tongue in this specific scripture is not talking about any type of tongue. It's talking about you being able to speak a foreign language. If you go on in the verse, through the verses, it starts to say that they were speaking in, in the other native languages and they, they came up and they were like, how in the world are you speaking in our native tongue, right? And some of them thought that they were drunk, which means this, not only did the gift of tongues manifest in that moment, for those who were willing, the gift of interpretation happened in that moment. Because some were able to hear and some thought that they were drunk. Here's what I'm saying, because I want to be super clear as we move on. If you do not yet pray in tongues or speak in tongues, it does not mean that you do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay? I'm going to say it again. It does not mean that you have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit. It just means somewhere in your life you have not activated a gift that has always been there. Okay? I want to break down these few things and I want to get to the real good one that I want us to talk about, okay? Because when you pray in tongues, whew, something happens in your life and you shift, okay? Let me do this. If you don't speak in tongues in this room and if you do speak in tongues in this room, this, I don't, for those who speak in tongues, I don't want you to listen like you've heard it. Yes. And if you don't speak in tongues, I don't want you to listen like you've heard it. I want to unite the room to only receive the revelation of the Lord about the tongue for you. For you to say, I don't speak in tongues would mean you would stop having to speak English. The Tower of Babel, they were building this thing all the way up. And God says to the council of God, they're going to get whatever they will because all of their minds are on one accord. They're all together. And it says, let us divide their tongue. At that moment, many languages were created right there. Okay. I just kind of want, want, want to make it simple for you. Okay. Because sometimes you need to demystify the mystery so that you can just receive it. Tell somebody, say, I have 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Here's the second thing I want us to correct, okay? When it comes to speaking in tongues corporately. This is corporate, okay? Right? I want to talk to you about the order of worship. This right here, this gathering right here. 1 Corinthians 14, 28. Let me go through these really quickly. You can, go, you can take notes. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at most three should speak in turn. And someone must interpret. But if there is no interpreter, if there's no what? He should remain silent in the church and speak only to himself and God. Two or three prophets should speak and the other should weigh carefully what is said. In other words, this tongue is a gift where God himself speaks through the person to edify the entire room to receive something supernaturally that comes from God from an imperfect vessel. We had it several weeks ago when we were worshiping and the presence of the Lord filled the room. Some of y'all may remember this and somebody began to speak in tongues in this corporate setting and this is what happened. I made the room come to a halt. We got quiet and we waited for the interpretation of that tongue because we wanted to be in order with this word. Tell somebody to say, keep it in order. Okay, now do we understand that? We got the corporate thing wor worked out. All right, we got the foreign tongue worked out. Now I want us to talk about Praying in tongues. Pastor, I don't, like, I don't like when people talk in tongues. I don't like when people pray in tongues. I got really good news. Because if you feel weird about hearing somebody else pray in tongues, can I give you the good news? Tell somebody, say, give me the good news. They ain't talking to you. Why you feel weird? No, no, no. Tell somebody, say, I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to him. Get out my business. Get your own. Did he say, be about your fathers? Okay. First Corinthians 14, this is it, two, and I'm read verse four. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the spirit. Verse four, it says, for if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying. Who's praying? The spirit is praying, but I don't understand what I am saying. That is beautiful right there. When I'm praying in tongues, I am praying through the Holy Spirit, praying through me, but my mind don't comprehend what my spirit knows to be true. The reason why you can't receive it is because you have such a desire to understand something that was supposed to be a mystery. It's like a, it's like a woman who births a baby. How for nine months do you form this child in their, their arms? And their, I mean, have y'all ever seen a baby in the womb? That thing is ugly. It's, it's just the process of it. It's like, where the eyes at? Then the eyes come, you're like, oh my God. And in the, in the beginning, you're like, that thing ugly. When it comes out, you're like, oh my God. How can something in the beginning that would look ugly now be so pretty? I mean, when my kid came out, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you still got some work to do. Lord, I know they fearfully, no, I'm just joking. I'm just... Is Gigi in here? Okay. You're so beautiful, baby. No, she's beautiful now, but I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Woo, when he do it. See, I just, I just helped some of y'all. You know I did. Oh, your baby's so, um... Different. <laughs> what are we talking about? Praying in tongues. Here's what I'm trying to say, okay? What I'm about to say to you is going to help all the logical people. All the logical people in the room say, hey. hey. What I'm about to say to you is going to help all the logical people in the room. And watching. Praying in the spirit requires you to get out of your head. Write it down. Tell somebody, say, get out your head. Here's the benefits, okay? Here's why you got to get out your head. Because one of the benefits of praying in tongues, it helps us pray when we don't know what to pray. Have you ever had, have you ever wanted to pray for somebody you didn't know what to pray? Romans 8, 26, I'm going to read it. 
Write the notes. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Verse 27. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit is in you to help you pray a perfect prayer. He's in you because he has access to the mind of God. So when you don't know what to pray, you are. The Holy Spirit, if I choose to speak in my heavenly language, praying in tongues, the prayer will be perfect because the Holy Spirit will speak for me to God, interceding what is deep groans and moans in my own heart. Have you ever had to pray for somebody you didn't know what to pray for? There's moments, can I help you? There's moments when y'all ask me to pray for y'all. Can I just be honest? Can your pastor be really honest with you? I don't know what to pray for y'all for. When some of y'all come up here, you're like, pray for me, pastor. For some reason, that's how, in my mind, that's what y'all do. <laughs> I want y'all to come, so don't, don't not come when our case. All right. So some of y'all come and you're like, pray for me, pastor. And can I tell you, let me give you a disclaimer, okay? For the rest of this gathering, I'm going to let you in on my private life. I'm not speaking corporate tongues. As your shepherd, I wanna teach you what it looks like step by step so that you can understand when you go home, how to practically do it. Disclaimer, can everybody sign the contract? Say yes. yes. Thank you. Bro in the back, sign the co I'm just joking. <laughs> Sometimes you come up and I'm praying for you. I put my hand on you and I'm silent. Not because I don't know what to say. Well, that's true, I don't know what to say. And so under my breath, I just say, and it's just like seconds. It don't take long at all. Just seconds. Because the Holy Spirit moves faster than the speed of light. The Bible says that the Spirit has access to the mind of God. So when I'm praying for you, here's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm speaking through the Spirit to go get for you and for me a message from the mind of God and bring it back. So to you, it looks like boom, doom, 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 doom. And right, and the Spirit is like this. It's like, you ever seen like a bank when you put the little thing in the bank and the teller thing goes shh, shh, shh. That's what's happening in the spirit. So I'm praying, right, right? And then the Holy Spirit's going to get what I don't know to pray for. He brings it back to me, and I look at you like I know the answer. I look at you and I say, oh, you're having heart issues. You say, oh, my God. <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> See, look, you've been talking to him. How you know that? You've been on my Facebook, haven't you? No, I ain't been on your Facebook. But the Holy Spirit has your life in his book. And so the Spirit of God goes and he brings what is happening in your world to me. And it may come through uh, one of those gifts that I told you in Ephesians, right? Words of knowledge, right? Wisdom and prophecy and all those things. And then that's what ends up happening. I pray for you, but I'm using my prayer language because I don't always know what to pray for you. That's one of your benefits, why you should desire to pray in tongues. You know how many times you got to pray for people when you go to Target, when God says pray? Sometimes I go to Target and he says Go pray for them. And when he says go pray for them, I don't know what to pray. I'm just walking by faith. And this is what I'm doing in them 16 steps when I get to you. I'm like, I'm smiling at you too. I'm like, your, ne your necklace is nice. How you do it? I felt like God told me to pray for you. In those 17 steps, it took God 17 steps to get me a word about you. That's how powerful your prayer life and your tongue is. See, I'm helping you close the gap between light and dark. Just because you were brought out of darkness through Jesus Christ doesn't mean that the enemy doesn't want your mind to stay in darkness. Um, gotta be practical, I'm trying to be practical. I wanna be practical, Joah. I wanna preach, I wanna teach today, okay? 
Tell somebody, say, boom. boom. There it is. All right. When I, well, the reason why I say I want this to help the logical people in the room, because when you don't learn to get out of your head, you'll get in the way of the one who should be leading the way. Okay? So I let go of my logic and I let the leading of the Holy Spirit happen so that he can bring to me a perfect prayer from God's heart and from God's will, not my own will. Okay? Here's another benefit from you. When you pray in tongues, you build yourself up. Ooh, have you ever been tired? And the church said, if you never tired, you lying. <laughs> I was tired this morning getting up. That's what it says, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. Write it down. The one who speaks in, tongue, in a tongue builds up himself, by the, uh, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. In other words, that word build means edify. Edify means to, it, it's like erecting or strengthening or building up the person. Okay? This is how it happens. You, you don't just have a spirit. A man is a spirit. You are a spirit. When you're saved, the Holy Spirit comes into your spirit, and that's what sanctifies you. Right? Somebody say, hey. That's what sanctifies you, right? And then the Holy Spirit within you begins to communicate for you, and he starts to strengthen your inner man. Sometimes, y'all, we got five kids. Five. Did you hear me? Five. I thought I would have had a little bit more empathy right there. Y'all come and watch them. Five kids. I love them. I love my kids. I don't want to. I, I feel like I'm, I love my kids, okay? I do love my kids. But some, all five, including Gigi. Sometimes we're just tired. Have you ever been so tired? You like, you don't know, like you fall asleep on your kid. And you wake up and, and they're still alive. <laughs> like, whoa, you're still alive. <laughs> We're going to be okay. <laughs> We've had that moment plenty of times. But then there's moments that I'm like, okay, you know what? I got I to gotta push through this. You're at work and you know you can't sleep on the job. Like some of y'all about to fall asleep right now. And you're going to miss it. <laughs> and what I do, again, disclaimer, this is not corporate. I'm just letting you in. Sometimes I just thought that the Holy Spirit strengthened me right now. I thank you that by the power of your Holy Spirit, power means dunamis. Dunamis means dynamite. That means something in the Holy Spirit will allow your spirit to explode and bring supernatural strength to your mortal body. And the more you do it, the more you start to feel what is called a charge. Build up. Edify means charge. Have you ever had a dead phone? What do you do with a dead phone? Why wouldn't you charge you then? You can't run off of a dead battery. The Holy Spirit is the battery of God that never goes out. So I, every day, I speak in tongues every day. I pray in tongues every day. You know why? Because y'all... I get tired sometimes. I just woke up on the or ba 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 ba. Strengthen me today, Lord. I thank you that today I have all the strength I need to serve all the people that you have me to serve today. Some of y'all need to try it on your way to work, Lord. Today, instead of me cussing her out, give me strength in the name of Jesus to deal with bon kui kui and right right pookie. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, Pookie. Tell somebody, say, build yourself up. That's an amazing benefit that you get from praying in tongues. The Greek word is okodoma. Okodome, excuse me. Go back and look that up when you get an opportunity. It's a, it's a, it's a really good one, okay? When you feel tired. And I, and I just use tired as an example. But sometimes you can pray. And I can pray in tongues and I can lay my hands on you and you'll feel a supernatural strength come over you. Because that charge is being released by faith to God. Okay? 
So what was the first benefit? Helps you pray, right? Pray the perfect prayer. Second benefit, helps strengthen your body by edifying you. Here's the third one. Tongues release the mysteries of God. This is all I want to talk about. This is, this is all I want to talk about. Okay. Tell somebody to say mysteries. Anybody want a mystery from God? In other words, all three of you. I get it. I get it because mystery sound, it just sounds weird, but let me help you, okay? This is what it means. When I pray in tongues, I'm bringing forth a revelation of God's plans and his purposes for my life. And if it's not for my life, it's for your life. I told you earlier, sometimes we don't know what to pray. And so we pray in the spirit. And when we pray in the spirit, we're praying to who? Praying to God. And as we pray to God, God starts to release things over us. There are things that have not come to you because you will not move past your logical thinking. I want to free you. Stop practicing like you are more human than you are spirit. Yes. Yes. Amen. To be absent from the body is to be present with, you are a spirit borrowing a body. And that body at the end will be resurrected and you will have a glorified body. You see? You are spirit having, all right, back to it, back to it. Okay, okay. First Corinthians 14, two, I wanna help somebody. Tell somebody to say, I want the purposes and plans for God. First Corinthians 14, verse two. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. The Greek word for mysteries is mysterian. It's very close. It's close together. It means divine secrets or hidden truths about God. Don't you want to know things that God has hidden for you? There are things that God has about your life that will not come until you start entertaining who you really are as a spiritual believer of Jesus Christ. And the only thing that you have to do is believe. That's all you got to do is just believe. Tell somebody to say, just believe, right? So if I want the divine secrets of God, the hidden things, tell somebody to say, I want the hidden things. Then you got to take a step in moving your prayer life and your spiritual life forward. Can I tell you, God wants you to know more about him than you want to know him. Okay, he does. Proverbs 25, 2. I got a whole bunch of scripture for y'all because the scripture helps you go back and say he wasn't preaching a refrigerator manual. Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Proverbs 25, 2. Write it down because that word king is not a capital K. It's a lowercase k. You and I are the lowercase king of the king. He says, I've hidden things for your life. I have plans for your life. There are things that I want for you. There are, listen, there are, there are investments that you should be making at the time God tells you to make that if you would take a moment and pray in tongues, God would reveal to you the timing that you need to make the investment. Let's just not think that mysteries and praying in tongues is simply for the edification of your body and for just, listen, there are things that God has for your business. Insight, wisdom. Revelation from the throne of God that will not come unless you move into a spiritual, mature place with God in your prayer life. I know I'm praying about tongues. We're talking about tongues, okay? Y'all still here? Okay. In other words, God has set you up as kings. Kings is not a gender. Kings is a position. Ladies, you're kings. Okay. But it's our job to search them out. Tell somebody say, it's your job to search it out. So 
if a mystery is a hidden thing from God and God wants me to know these things about God, then I need to understand that a mystery does not mean it's something that's unknowable. A mystery is not something unknowable. A mystery is something that can only be known through revelation. And the only one who can reveal it is God revealing it through the Holy Spirit. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to reveal. I wish I had a whiteboard. The Holy Spirit to reveal the plans and the purposes of God for your life. God wants you to know the mysteries that he's actually set up for you. Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets. You do not know about things to come. This is what Jesus says to his disciples. He says, I still have so much to tell you, but I cannot bear. You cannot bear it. Why? Because he knew. You're going to need a prayer language that's going to allow you to connect directly through the Holy Spirit to access the mysteries of God. Mysteries are simply hidden things about your life or hidden things for the body of Christ that God will not give to the person who will not seek. See, the reality is God's not hiding anything from you and he's not trying to make anything difficult but he's hiding things in himself so that you can find him you missed it he's not hiding anything from you and he's not trying to be difficult but he hides it in himself those who seek will find now that scripture makes sense with all my heart which means I got to get out my head to allow my heart to connect to the revelation of his heart so that I can receive all the things he has it ain't weird so the next time something's happening in the world there's not a believer in this room that has to be walking in confusion you don't have to walk in confusion confusion is a spirit of the enemy the Bible says that my God is not the author of confusion so just because you live in a confused country doesn't mean that you are supposed to be bound to a confused company. Can I remind you of where you're from? You're not from this place. You're from the kingdom of heaven. And with the kingdom of heaven, that gives you the access to the mind of God. So the world may be tripping, saying that this whole world is going to a, 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 a basket of hell. Can I tell you? No, it ain't. This world ain't going to hell as far as long as I'm still here, somebody's going to heaven. As long as we're still here, somebody's going to get saved. As long as we're still here, somebody's going to get the good news. Uh, there ain't nothing There ain't nothing bad about the good news of Jesus. You don't have to be confused a day in your life because you've got the mind of God living on the inside of you. I need you to get that. I need you to grab that. I said you have the mind. Let this mind that is in Christ also be in you. Hang on. Hang on. Here's what I'm trying to say, because I need you to get it. I can't stand these pastors that won't talk about tongues. It's because somebody told them wrong. Somebody forced it. It's not forced. And if you're in this room and what I'm saying, when I say the word tongues, it rubs you wrong. I got so much compassion for you because you, you know why? It's so simple. And somebody made it whack, but we're restoring it today. We're restoring it today. He's not trying to make this difficult, but can I tell you, he wants to hide things in himself. Why would God hide things? Why would God hide things? Ask yourself, why would God hide things? Why would you give the best of yourself to a gold digger? You wouldn't. And so the Lord says, I'm saving the best for the people who would diligently seek after me. Ask and the door will be open. What's next? Knock, right? Seek, ask, seek, knock. In other words, he's saying, keep coming back. There's more. Keep coming back. 
There's so much more. See, it ain't this, it ain't this mystical thing like, oh my gosh, she wants me to like do something and turtle around 14 times and jump. And then, no, no, it's just every single day I choose to come back to you and I choose in the spirit to always pursue you. Tell somebody say pursue him. This is what Jesus says at the end. He says, he will glorify me. This is John 16. Verse 14, he will glorify me by taking from me, taking from what's mine and disclosing it to you. That word disclose means a mystery unfolded. The reason why you get married or the reason why you have a really good best friend, anybody got best friends in the room? Like my wife is my best friend. So I love this. The reason why you get married or you have a really good best friend is because friends tell friends secrets. I no longer call you slaves or servants, but friends because a slave nor servant doesn't know what his master is doing. But I call you friends now because you now know everything I've told you. He was setting them up the same way I'm setting you up to start living your life befriending the Holy Spirit. If you don't befriend the Holy Spirit, you've moved back into slave mentality. You can still be serving Jesus, but still operate as a slave. That's why when I pray, I don't beg. Friends don't beg. Sons and daughters don't beg. You and I are sons and daughters of God. You don't beg. The salvation that you have through the blood of Jesus allows you to come boldly before his throne with humility in your heart, understanding that the spirit of God has taken up residence within my spirit. And so I better approach him boldly because of what he did, not because of what I'm doing. So you get married because it reveals the reality that a secret only belongs to those who are in covenant. A secret only belongs to those who choose to intimately know each other. Ask your neighbor, say, do you know God? There are things that God has prepared for you in your own life that he's waiting for you to receive by his Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8. I got three more scriptures and then I'm gonna let you go. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Rather, it is written, no, watch this. Now this scripture is going to make sense. We're like, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no has it entered the heart of man. What the law going to do for me? He ain't doing it. Because you're reading it wrong. This scripture has everything to do with the mysteries. Listen, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has imagined what God has prepared for those who, what? Love him. Verse 10, but God has revealed it to us by the spirit. The spirit searches all things and even the deep things of God. God, your God's so big that the Holy Spirit is forever searching God. Your God is so big that every time the Holy Spirit goes back to search the mind of God, he is forever searching who God is because he is so vast. Your God, that's why you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, reduce your God to your problem because your God is not your problem. He's the God who solves problems. He's not a God who looks at mountains. He's a God who speaks to mountains. He's not a God who sizes him up to a giant. He's a God who tells the giant to move out of the way. That's why your sickness 
is not a problem for God. That's why your, your issues are not problems for God. There's nothing too hard for God. It just takes faith to move God. So he says, no eye has seen it, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the heart. Why? Because the person who wants to see this type of mystery has to diligently find it through seeking after the Father, praying in the Spirit. See, I don't have time to show you when Paul would pray. There's 20 times in the Bible when Paul would say, and this mystery came by this, and this mystery came by this, and this mystery, and this mystery. What was he saying? I've been praying in the spirit so much, God's saying stuff to me that ain't been written down yet. Did you know that you're living off of a word that was not written at that time, but was in somebody's heart who, see, uh, yeah, should I go there? Check, 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 with, check with the savings, and my savings with the check-ins. I love this word with all my heart. No, you need to play. No, I'm serious. Psychologically, it does something for you. I love this word. Do you know why I love this word? Because by the spirit, it has no error, but the people who wrote it had errors. No, no, get this. But God, has not stopped with this written word. Did you know that you are a written word? God is still writing this book through you because you are now a living epistle, a living, walking, breathing word. The reason why it's so important for you to lean into your prayer life and your praying in tongues because there's certain things that God wants to say to you. Now this is how good he is. His word goes this way and his word goes this way. So there's something that he will say that you're like, where is this? And he'll connect it to the last mystery that he gave to another disciple. Some of you are so afraid because the revelation you've been getting from God, no one's talking about. And you're like, is this God? Can I tell you? It is. You're just entertaining mysteries. Some of you have businesses that are 10 years ahead and you're like, I don't know how this is gonna happen. Can I tell you what's happened? A mystery has fallen into your lap in the form of a business. That's it. Some of you have books in you that you're like, I have no clue how this is supposed to be done because what I am saying and what God's given me, I feel like it's 10 years ahead. Can I tell you? God's brought forth a mystery to you that you need to steward. And if you have the spirit of the Lord, what I'm saying is echoing truth in you. I'm about to help you. The goal of the Holy Spirit, here's Tab, Tabitha. I almost said a name. Um, that was weird. I don't know. Might be your husband. Um, God wants to reveal to you through his revealer. The Holy Spirit is the revealer. Say it with me. The Holy Spirit is the revealer. Who is the Holy Spirit? See, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you receive access to God's secrets. And you have access to God's secrets about your life through the power 
of the Holy Spirit. So when I pray, I'm leaning in. I'm telling my logic to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ so that my spirit can be in complete unity with the Father's mind. When I say the Father's mind, I'm talking about his will for my life. Tell someone, say, you have access. The reason why most of us will not access the mysteries of God is because information has become the distraction. See, information is food to your mind, but revelation is food from the Holy Spirit. If you want more of God, then you've got to start entertaining more of the revelation from God than information from the, from the world. Okay, I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help you move your prayer life forward. Some of you, just, just, be, just be, be bluntly honest. Bluntly honest. How many feel like you just hit a wall sometimes in your prayer life? Like for those who don't, who don't yet, yet speak in tongues, you just feel like, like I'm just hitting a wall. I'm like, I'm so confused. Like I get, I get halfway and then it's like something doesn't break. Come on, be honest in the room. By show of hands. Yeah. Today is going to break. And the reason why I'm coming against information versus revelation is because information sometimes can be the block of revelation entering your heart by way of the Holy Spirit. Your numbers and God's numbers are not the same numbers. Your time and God's time are definitely not the same time. If you notice, God doesn't know time because when you ask for him to come, he never shows up when you want him to come. But for some reason, we all come back to the same line. He's always on time. Why? Because he holds it. He just holds it. That's a mystery. Did you, did you, you missed it? Did you get it? I should not entertain time. I should entertain the one who holds it. And if I love him and he loves me, I can move time. God, I'm gonna destroy these people. They're sinning. No, you're not. And the Lord changed his mind because there was fellowship there. All right, okay, I'm almost done. Tell somebody, say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Breathe on me now. Breathe on me now. Here's what I'm, this is all I'm trying to say. Praying in tongues is not about you and I just praying. Praying in tongues is about you receiving. It's one thing for you to pray in tongues. It's another thing for you to receive through your tongues. When I'm praying, the reason why I'm getting, that I'm getting simultaneous downloads. I'm praying. Right. I'm praying, but simultaneously because my God is a giver. And my, I, I don't know what I'm praying. I just know I have a need. He simultaneously is releasing a message back to me. Let me help you. Daniel, for 21 days, was in a fight. And remember the angel, Gabriel, came. And the Bible says that Gabriel brought a message to Daniel. The emphasis has been the fight, but the fight is not the important thing. Yeah. Daniel must have been praying in the spirit because messengers don't come unless there's a message to be given. It means someone connected to the spirit of God to move the heart of God, to bring the plans of God to the earth. You have the power through the Holy Spirit to bring the plans of God to the earth. How do I do it? 
your kingdom come. Your will be done. Not mine, your will be done. How do I do it, Pastor Chris? Here's how you do it. You just simply say, God, I want it. I wanna specifically talk to you about praying in tongues. I don't want you to stand. I just want you to receive for just a moment, okay? If you're in this room and you do speak in tongues, just by show of hands, just raise your hands. You do. For a long time, I used to think I didn't really have it, Rich, because I was like, this must be fake. This like has to be fake. Because nobody came and like wiggle my tongue. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Don't I like y'all, y'all, y'all don't do that too. I was like, nobody came and wiggle my tongue. This must not be real. But then I look back at the scriptures that specifically talk about tongues. And the most important word is utterance. Let what I'm gonna say, Holy Spirit, move logic to the side and let those who hunger to pray in tongues receive by the grace of God. I was praying and the Holy Spirit showed me a picture of you. And he says, the gift of tongues and praying in tongues is a gift from God through his Holy Spirit. But praying in tongues is for everyone. You can have it. I'm done saying it's not for y'all. Here's what's not for all. Speaking in tongues concerning foreign languages or on behalf of God to a corporate people. It's not for everybody. But for your prayer life, it's for everybody. And theologians and pastors, if you want to hit me up, please email richjurgens at gmail.com. I know you do. It's for everybody. Tell somebody, say, it's for you. And even for the people who have it, there is another tongue for you. It's not just one, there's many. Utterance is the most important word here. So they were all in the upper room and they were praying and the spirit came on them, right? And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then it talks about the word and they all uttered, uttered, enabled. It's just simple. Yeah. When you're at home, or you may wanna try it here. First off, realize you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. Say, I have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. It is that simple. Here's the second thing that is really simple. You're not good at making up languages. Have you tried to speak Spanish or another foreign language? It's like you can get the hello, hola, como esta. After that, I'm done. We, oui, that's it. When I try to go on, I realize I come to the end of my knowledge. So stop thinking that that tongue is fake. You're not that good. I'm so for real. Tell, tell your friends that you're not that good. Which means it's this simple. I enter his presence and I say, thank you. I am fully aware that I'm standing in the presence of God. I decree and declare that my mind, my mind would be brought low and that the spirit of the Lord within me would rise up. Lord, in this moment, don't let my logic be the distraction of the gift you have for me. Here it is, it's simple. All you gotta do is say, ah. Ah. And see, you don't have to make it up. The Bible says that all you have to do is speak, but the Holy Spirit brings the utterances. And it's weird in the beginning, because it's like, it's like syllables, 
Christy is like, where, where is this coming from? And then some of you might feel like a little heat right here because the stirring of the Holy Spirit is coming alive. And he's like, oh my God, I've been waiting for this moment. Yeah. He said, like, we about to talk to God. That's literally what the Holy Spirit does. It's like, we about to talk. We about to talk now. Okay. I open my mouth. By faith, I put a sound to his utterance. Here's why. It's the first law that God ever created. In the beginning, God said, let there be. See, you have to speak something for anything to exist on the earth. See, tongues is a law, not just a gift. It's the ability to connect the utterances that come from the spirit of God to the volume that comes from your mouth. And so while I used to be like, well, who's going to form the next one? Because the T, I got the T. So, Honda, Jeep, Jeep Cherokee, Jeep Cherokee, Honda, Jeep Cherokee, Mitsubishi. No, nah, bro. <laughs> see, see you're, you're, you're thinking, y'all are laughing, but we do this. We're thinking. The Bible, t- Jesus tells the disciples, he says, listen, don't think or even ponder what you're going to say. I'm going to fill your mouth. The right interpretation then says this, I will be your mouth. Let God be your mouth. May the grace of God fill this room now and make available a prayer language, the gift of tongues. This is not for everybody. If you don't want, even if you're not ready, I just love for you to, be, to take care of these benefits. I want you to have these benefits. They're yours, okay? And maybe you, might, maybe you won't get it in the moment. Can I tell you, go home tonight, get in your prayer room. Because it might be a little bit more comfortable there. I'm done trying to force anybody to speak in tongues or pray in tongues. We're not doing that here. You might feel more comfortable doing it there. But there is a grace right now in the room. Okay, you know what you do? It's when you just slip up your hands just like this for those in the room who just want it. I want it, okay? And for those in the room who want new tongues, lift up your hands. I'm gonna lift up my hands too. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, listen, I do not want you to yell. I do not want you to scream and I do not want your volume to go past a whisper. If you start screaming, I'm going to assume the Lord's given you a corporate tongue and I'm gonna wait for an interpretation of that tongue. I want, to, I want to bring order to this room. This is not the time for corporate tongue. This is for prayer language. If you start speaking out, I'm gonna hush you up. Okay? This is specifically for praying languages, prayer languages. Lord, release faith in this room. By the power of your Holy Spirit, would you just awaken these prayer languages? Holy Spirit, would you bring utterances as they open their mouth? In just a moment, would you give them faith to release it? faith to release it. Okay? On the count of three, all I want you to do is going to look weird. I just want you to just open your mouth and release the utterances from the Holy Spirit. It's not you. One, two, three. Come on.